Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. My name is Alan and we're back to high performance and high speed networks, but we especially wanted to share with you even higher speed cards, particularly those oriented for what is quickly replacing 10 gigabit per second infrastructures, as you can see here in this graph, where we can see the total of ports shipped worldwide. We're talking about the 25 gigabit per second Ethernet, and in particular, we're going to show you what to expect not only from these 25 gigabit per second dual SFP28 network cards manufactured by LR Link, but also how you can mix them in several different network topologies so that they can match your enterprise needs or scenarios. 25 gigabit per second is part of the 100 gigabit per second Ethernet standard, but they both use different SFP modules, as we'll see in a moment. Due to the ever-growing need of managing huge amounts of data, this type of network cards will not only be suitable for connecting directly to your existing networks, but can provide you with other great advantages. I'm going to show you some of that in a moment. What you get in the box, by the way, very well packaged and protected, is the network card itself with its low profile bracket, instructions and warranty card. Of course, you don't need to worry about if you don't get them in English, as you'll find all documentation in the manufacturer's website. The card is very well labeled, so you'll be able to identify it very easily. General information, this one is an 8x PCI Express card version 4, which is more than enough for the data transfer rates that it is capable of handling. It's based on Intel's E810 chipset, and something important to consider is that you can install it on PCI Express version 2, 3, 4, or 5. This motherboard we're using it in, for example, features a version 5 PCI slot. We installed this network card and we did not have to install any drivers, at least in Windows Server 2022, which is one of the ones we use the most. This hands-free driver installation, of course, is due to the fact that I had internet connections at all times and drivers were automatically downloaded. If you can't connect through an alternate connection, you can download the drivers from the manufacturer's website or get the drivers back from Intel for the operating system you're going to use in your servers. Many options, as I said, for the operating system that you choose. You can find, by the way, the links in the description of this video. For those of you who are new to these networking environments, getting one of these dual network cards, as with any other multi-port card we've seen in the past, is actually like having separate adapters. That being said, let's explore some important considerations to keep in mind when using these cards. Most of the configurable options of this network card you'll find in the device manager under the advanced settings, which will provide you with all the features you might want to adjust in order for the card to connect or work successfully in your environment. For instance, if one of your ports is going to connect to a 10 gigabit per second switch, you'll want to set this in speed to the desired value. Auto negotiation may not actually work and something very similar happened when connecting at 2.5 or 5 gigabit per second when using a 10 gigabit per second card or switch. For example, right here, we're going to connect it to a 10 gigabit per second aggregation switch from Unify at 10 gigabit per second. So we also need to change this value in the switch. You can do this from the network controller of Unify. When working large enterprise infrastructures using the fantastic distributed file system or DFS, you may have them set to synchronize and you might want to have a very fast and stable connection between servers. This means that you may want to consider establishing high-speed links between servers so such synchronization takes place in no time. Remember that this can also be achieved by using third-party software. Link aggregation between switches or, in terms of servers, the connection network card teaming may greatly improve not only for the performance, but also the availability of the connection as if one of your optic cables is accidentally affected, the other one will act as a backup, providing connectivity. That is why it may be a good idea to have different cable runs through different parts of the building. Another infrastructure service that may greatly benefit from using these higher speeds is your software update services. Even now that internet access is crazy fast in some areas, there are some others that may want to implement update services so that traffic is optimized at critical hours and deployed to the interior of the organization by servers playing that role. We also use this card in a Hyper-V environment, where also many of you may need to concentrate big transfer rates and speeds like these ones. No trouble right here, and performance of each server as well as response time was according to the network card's capabilities. In this case, also having a multiple port card may give you a great advantage if each virtual server is to connect to different physical networks. 
Again, for those of you new to this type of networking speeds, as well as with any other network card with SFP ports, you will need to get modules separately. And also very important is to get in this specific case SFP28 modules for 25 gigabit per second transfer rates. When choosing them, not only make sure to get the correct fiber optic type, that is multi-mode or single mode, but also its specifications to match those of the SFP modules in terms of wavelength and distance, very important. In this case, we're running short distances under 70 meters, which is the current standard for 25 gigabit per second over OM3. So that is why we're using this OM3 multi-mode optic fiber. Like I said, the SFP modules used for 25 gigabit per second are SFP28. And in this particular case, we're using SFP28s from LR Link that work at 850 nanometers of wavelength. That means that they are suitable for multi-mode fiber and the distance for which these are designed is 100 meters. If I needed those 100 meters, I would go for the OM4 fiber, which is also colored aqua. I will leave you the links in the description for SFP28 modules of greater distances over single mode fiber. This will let you link premises at very long distances at incredible speeds. There was a time, not long ago by the way, that these high speeds were considered only for ultra high performance servers, but due to the amount of information that we're handling today, with the ever growing resolution and multimedia file sizes, 10 gigabit per second and 25 gigabit per second are becoming more common in many medium sized and small businesses, as well as computers not necessarily running server operating systems. It is very common to have many terabytes of information stored in servers that you cannot risk to lose, so replication and very fast transfer links for backup purposes as needed. Right here, these kind of links may be useful where you can have both servers interconnected without SFP28 capable switches and having them exchange data at lightning speeds. As we said with link aggregation or network card teaming, using both SFP28 modules may be very handy for reaching up to 50 gigabit per second interconnections more and more common every day. Something to keep in mind when working with these and similar adapters is of course airflow, as you might want to keep them properly ventilated, as it is very common working with SFPs to see them warm up quite a bit. We have liked very much these network adapters and if you continue to watch this video published, our experience continues to be great. Also something important to notice is that we tested chat contact through the manufacturer's website and always received an answer from them. Thank you for watching our videos, please remember that the ideas that we share with you are experience testing and using these devices so you can buy them making an informed decision. Also remember that you incredibly support us by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. See you next time. Good.